Hey guys, Brian with Phone Arena here, and today we're going to take a look at the HTC Amaze 4G. The Amaze 4G is the latest super phone from HTC, featuring a 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S3 Snapdragon processor. It's got a gig of RAM with uh, 16 gigs of internal memory. You've got a gorgeous 4.3 inch QHD display with a super LCD panel. It also features an 8 megapixel camera capable of shooting 1080p video. So really in terms of specs, this one is up there with all the other great phones out there. In terms of design, it's a pretty interesting phone. It's very heavy. Um, we're used to HTC top-end devices being heavy, but for some reason this feels a little bit heavier than past phones like the Evo, even though it's about the same. One of the uh, strange things that we've seen before is the battery door. Let's go ahead and get this off. It's actually all the sides and everything as well. So as you can see the phone, we're left with basically just the display here. A little trim ring down there, but everything's pretty much integrated right into the, the back door, including the antennas, and there's also an NFC chip in here for near, near field communication. So it's kind of nice because if you scratch something up, you can simply replace the battery door as opposed to replacing the phone, unless of course what you scratch is the display itself, but it's a pretty scratch resistant glass, so that's nice. In terms of performance, everything is lightning quick on this phone, as we would expect. This is the fastest HTC phone out there. We also have Sense 3.0, which is something we've seen before on devices like the Evo and the Sensation, so, excuse us, the Evo 3D and the Sensation, so nothing new here to report, but it is blazingly fast. We really like this. This is our, definitely our favorite Android overlay, so if you're not going to go with stock Android, then this is definitely a good option. On the side here, you can see we have two dedicated keys down at the bottom. The silver one down below is the camera key, and the little button that looks like a record button is in fact a record button, so it's a dedicated camcorder key. On the top here, we've got the volume rocker, and then we move up to the power button, the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and then on the side we have the charging port. A micro USB does fit in that, but as you can see, it's got those extra little prongs like we saw on the HTC Flyer. So you can use either of those. Down at the bottom we've got our four capacitive Android keys, nothing too spectacular here. We also have a two megapixel front camera and then the earpiece. And along the back we have our eight megapixel camera with a dual LED flash. That flash is extremely powerful. It's actually able to light up our kitchen no problem in, in total darkness. So we're really impressed with that. I'm kind of surprised to see it's not a xenon with the power that it is. And then also we have the phone single speaker. So all in all, it's a really good design. That's something we're very much used to from HTC. So it's just another example of how HTC is one of the leaders out there in hardware technology. Like we said, this is running the Sense 3.0, so nothing really new here. You've got your cool little pull ring. You can you know go straight into the phone or whatever you set up these for to do for your um, direct access. The camera interface is very nice. Let's go ahead and just put something in here real quick to focus on. And we're going to take a quick picture and you can see there's almost no shutter lag. That thing just snaps really quickly. So that's really nice to have. Um, that's one of the big things with this. Unfortunately, camera performance was only so-so for a high-end device. Um, it really seemed to focus in on the focal point but then kind of blur the edges, which was a little bit surprising. but. Uh, for casual users and for people who aren't buying this for the camera capabilities, the camera will be more than adequate for what they need. And that real quick flash, or excuse me, shutter with the dedicated button means you can use this almost like you can use a regular digital camera. Um, internet performance, nothing too out of the ordinary here. We are used to HTC's stock browser, so nothing new, but it is one of the better browsers out there. It's nice and quick. We've got no problems with it. As you can see, it's going to take a second to load here, but loaded our web page, which is fairly complex, pretty quickly. We've got our double taps, we've got our pinch to zooms, you know, it of course rotates, so nothing new here, but again, great performance out of it. And great performance overall with the Sense 3.0 interface. You know, everything moves very quickly, there's no stutters, there's no lags, everything's butter smooth. One of the things we do kind of complain about, and this is on T-Mobile more than HTC, is all the preloaded software. Um, there are 16 apps, not including things like 
Adobe Reader and Facebook and Flash, which we figure most people are going to download anyway. Some of them might be useful. We've got Polaris Office, which is a great Office suite, but other things like this Pro Apps here, this doesn't even work. It takes us to a dead page. So we don't really like seeing the bloatware. You can't uninstall it. So that's a disappointment. Of course, there are ways to uninstall it, but for the average user, it's something you're going to be stuck with whether you want them or not. Thankfully, though, there's plenty of room. There's um, over two and a quarter gigs available for app storage, so it's not really touching any of that, and it doesn't affect the phone's performance. It's more just an annoyance of a phone that's supposed to be personalized. In terms of the call quality callers, we're pretty impressed with the phone. They said we sounded very clear, although we were a little bit hollow. And to us, they sounded slightly distant as well, and there's a little bit of a hiss in the background. So better performance than a lot of phones out there, but not at the top of the heap. Battery life was a bit of a disappointment. It's only got six hours of talk time as compared to the Sensation 4G, which is basically the same phone that had 8.25. And the Sensation actually has a smaller battery. So the uh, new HSPA Plus 42 megs technology is going to be a little bit more of a drain on the battery. So something to keep in mind. While we're talking about the Sensation, that's one of the, the issues we have with the Amaze 4G. It's a great device. If the Sensation wasn't out there, this would be fantastic. However, the Sensation is out there. It only came out a few months ago. Yeah, it's only got a 1.2 megahertz processor. Yeah, it only has 768 megs of RAM instead of 1 gig. But overall, these two devices are very, very similar. There's not a lot to set them apart. And for those who already have a Sensation, hang on to your Sensation. There's no real reason to upgrade to the Amaze. If you're looking to buy a new phone, the Amaze is a great phone. There's no doubt about that. It launched side by side next to the Galaxy S2. And that phone is one of the super phones out there. And this one stands with it toe to toe for sure. So if you like the phone, it's a great phone. We're not going to say don't go out and buy it. If you're looking to upgrade from the Amaze, or excuse us, from the Sensation, probably hold off until something better comes out, like for say an ice cream sandwich phone. But overall build quality is great. We like the feel. It's a little bit big and a little bit heavy and a little bit portly, but we're kind of used to that with these new HTC phones because of how high quality the material and the workmanship is. So all in all, we really like the phone. If you have a sensation, probably hang on to it, but otherwise it's definitely something to check out.